Hello guys, welcome back. In this, we'll talk about the second part of inner class, which is nested inner class. Now, how to use nested inner class? It's very simple. If you make your class as static, which means now this class becomes a static class inside a class. That means in order to use this entity, which is B, we have to use a class name. So instead of using A here, A means an instance of a a class, what we'll do is, instead of A, we can simply say it is B. But the problem is, we don't want A in the case of instance. We want to refer this A when you create object of B. So that means we have to use A on B side because this is a static, a static class. Now, so whenever you use a static class, it is normally called as nested class. Obviously, no one use it or it is not used in uh, general purpose applications, but still Java provides you a feature of static class. So, in fact, in my project, I have never worked with static class, so, but it, it has some some features. So, I, I might, uh, there might be some programmers who are interested in this static type of classes. So, this type of concept is called a static class. Okay. So, one, one, one of the uh, inner class type is member class. The second one is nested class. Now let's move towards this anonymous class. Now what exactly anonymous class is, let's let's just uh, run the code just to see what happens. When you go to this uh, project file again, or this uh, folder, you can see again the name is same, it's A bounded with B. That means th this class has a name called as B, which is bounded with A, that's why A dollar B, okay? But let's say I have a class, uh, let me just change the code a bit. I, let me remove the static and instead of inner class, let me move this class outside. So I have a class here. Where's the class? I have deleted, it's cut and paste. So now we have this class outside, let me just format the code. Okay, so now we have a class A and class B. For time in, let's remove this class A because I don't require it. So let's, let me just uh, remove the, uh, decrease the number of lines. Okay, now since I don't have a, a class A here, let me just remove this class A for a sec. Okay, now we are just focusing on class B, which is inside a class called as inner demo. Now this is how you create object, right? And now if I call this show, it will go to the implementation, which is, it will print a message, which is hello. But what if I want to call show, but instead of printing this hello message, I want to print hi message. Now, the only way you can do it, you can just, uh, either you have to go to this B class, you have to change this code from hello to hi. But let's say I don't want to change the code in this class, because this is pre-built class, I want other users to have the same output. But when I create an instance of B, I want a different output. So one of the way you can do is you can create a new class called as C. In this C class, you can just extends with B and you can define the same method here, which is public void show. You can do it, right? You can say public void show. Instead of printing hello, we'll print hi and we'll create an object of C. And obviously now if I run this code, it will print hi. Now this is the concept of polymorphism, right? But I don't want to do this. Just to just for sake of to print hi, I, I'm creating a new class called as C, extending with B. Why to do all those things? Now, if you focus on this line here, this is creating an instance of B class, right? So when you when you create instance of B class, it will jump to the class for the implementation. It will check for a method called as show. It will print hello. But what if if I say when you create instance don't look for a class called as B. The implementation for this instance is next, it's directly next line. That means instead of jumping to this, this implementation here, it will jump to this implementation. Okay. And this block will act like a class now, which means I can define this method there. So I can just say copy and paste. Format the code. So this is, you can directly define the implementation next to your object or next to your instance. And here, let me just call hi. So now we have an object of B, but instead of calling B 
B object or instead of instead of calling this show, I am defining the implementation of B instance here only. And that's the advantage of using something called as anonymous class. Because why it is anonymous, let's run this code. Again, the output you're expecting is high and the output you got is high. But let's have a look at this class here. Let me just refresh the code. Now if you can see this line here which is $8 base, the old one. Let me just delete that file. Let me delete all th everything. So that you will see what are the new files which are created. So run. Uh oh. Error. Let me just compile the code. Let's, okay. Let's run. Uh oh. Made a mistake. I should not really delete all these files. Let me delete these two files because I need I need that main file to run this code. Okay, just run. What's happening with the code? Okay, let me just. Uh oh, yeah. Uh, I should have recompiled this. So let me just clean and build the code. Okay, let me and it's going now. Okay, now if you go to that folder, you can see we have lots of classes and we have. All the classes, oh, okay. It's rebuild. Okay, done. And let me run this file. Let me go to the project. Ah. Now, if you can see, we have a class uh, B here. We have a class inner demo, and we have, I'm getting that A and B class. Okay. So if you can see here, we have inner class, this one. This is inner class, this is, and this is the file which I'm talking about. When you talk about inner class, it creates a file. You can see here, I'm creating a B class or anonymous B class inside a class called as inner demo. So instead of creating a new file, it is creating a dollar one, which means we don't have a class name. Right, so that's why we are using this numbering, and that's why this type of classes are called as anonymous classes. Simple, right? So this is called as anonymous class here. Now, uh, now the next type is your lambda, so that we'll see in the next part. Thank you so much.